Welcome to the dog days of summer, guys. We have four lessons that are going to be so cool, and we're going to do four things in each lesson. We're going to do something to build core strength and functional movement. We're going to do something with ball control, and we're going to do something with jumping and hopping. I know it's hot. That's why this is called dog days of summer, but it is good for your body to get hot. You're going to sweat. It's good. Go inside, drink a glass of water. When you sweat, you get all kinds of toxins out of your body that aren't good for your body and you sleep better at night. So are you ready? We're going to have so much fun. Let's do this. Game one, one game, the first game. Hey guys, our next game is Survivor. In Survivor, you can use anything you've got around the house to get across from one point to another. So if you see behind me, we have a noodle to a noodle and a noodle to a noodle. Pretend your yard is lava or the carpet in your family room. You can do two teams. You can play with just one person or you can play up to four, okay? We're gonna give you an example of four people playing. When four people play the game, you can use things, anything around the house. You can use paper bags to step on. My girls take these things out of their plastic refrigerator. You could use paper plates. We have spots too. Stools or chairs or hula-hoops, okay? We've got a noodle to start and a noodle to finish back there. Each team has to get from this side of the noodle to the other side of that noodle without touching the grass or the hot lava. They will burn their foot on fire, okay? So how are you gonna do it? They each have three pieces of equipment. If you wanna make it more challenging, use smaller pieces of equipment and less, all right? If you have a hula hoop, you can step inside the hula hoop like this. See how my feet are inside? But if I step outside, ah, I'm on fire. I gotta stay inside. As long as part of my foot is on or in the hoop, I'm fine. Just like with the spot. Like this, if I'm on the spot. Now, if I'm standing in the hula hoop and I pick it up, am I on the hula hoop anymore? Am I on it anymore? Yeah. No. So you cannot pick up the equipment when you're standing on it. Okay, are you guys ready? Get behind your noodle to start. On your mark, get set, go! Careful. Now, I give a little bit of grace depending on your age. Reagan accidentally stepped out one time and Issa accidentally stepped out one time. So I'm giving them some grace. They have to get all their equipment and their bodies all the way across without stepping the ground. The next time I see somebody step on the ground for each team, the whole team has to start over. This works on muscular strength. Uh-oh, sometimes if you throw the step too far, you gotta figure out a way. Uh-oh, you guys gotta start over. Take all your equipment back. Hurry, hurry. Let's see if they can make it. You always have a good attitude to give the start over. I don't know. Uh-oh, Madeline stepped on the ground. They have to start all over too. Both of you have to start behind the line. Give time to start behind the line. You gotta know how far your partner can leap. That's a good toss, right? Make sure you don't get too close to the other team. first to the other noodle wins. Sometimes you have to start over and over and over and over. 
The key to this is teamwork. If you've only got one person, you can do this by yourself too. Pretend your yard is lava. Order the carpet in your family room and use pillows to get across without touching the ground. Have a fun time. Game two, the second game. Hey guys, and welcome to Hit the Lid. All right, all you need is a lid, Gatorade lid, milk jug lid, and a ball, any kind of ball. Caleb's got a soccer ball over there. Can you roll it forward, Caleb, so we can see it? And then some chalk. So what you do with the chalk is you draw out a square like this. See the square here? And you draw a little circle in the middle where you put the cap. Now, depending on how old you are is how, depending on how old you are is how far away you stand. If you're younger, like NK4, you're gonna stand about one and a half feet from the square. If you're older, like third grade, you're gonna beep, 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 beep back here to this line, okay? The object of the game is to be the first person to hit the cap out of the square, okay? So you have to do a step. It's like a bounce pass in basketball. Step, push the ball down, try to hit the lid out of the square. You do not replace the cap to the center circle until it's gone out of the square and there's already been one winner for that round. The best of three rounds wins, okay? So we've got Caleb on one side, we've got Madeline on the other. Actually, I might play against Caleb if she doesn't want to. We'll see, okay? And we'll see who wins. You ready, Caleb? Here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, did I hit that lid? It didn't even move. All right, let's go, let's go. Oh, he hit the lid. Ah, I hit it, but it didn't move. Oh, he hit it again. Oh, he's gonna help me get it out, maybe. Ah. Oh, it moved a little bit. Round two. Are you ready, Caleb? We put it back in the center. Watch that put on the line. Moved only a tiny bit. So there's different ways to hit. You can try to do a low, up high drop on the top of it and it scoots a little bit out, or you can try to shove it out with a push pass which now it's coming towards me. So I'm using strategy, trying to get it to come out towards me. I can't do a push pass now if I want to win, unless I can get it hard. Ah, this turn. Ooh. Hit it back this direction. Oh, it's so close to the line, it's so close. Oh, I'm gonna let that count. We could say all the way out or we could say on the line. So we'll say Caleb won round two. Are you ready? Here we go. Round three. game. You can mix it up a little bit. If you make the lines further, it's going to be more of a challenge. If you make your start lines closer, it's going to be an easier challenge. Game three. One, two, three. The third game. This one was traditionally called Chinese jump rope when I was a little girl, but now they call it jump bands, I believe. So they sell these. You can buy them or you can just buy a long piece of elastic and tie a knot in it. Or if you don't have that easily available, you could even take uh, rubber bands and loop one through and pull it. So you can get creative with this, any kind of stretchy band. And what you're gonna do once you have a huge round stretchy band is you stretch it between two people, you jump a pattern and slowly move the band higher and higher. The person who can jump the pattern without messing up the highest wins and you take turns. You always give yourself, depending on your age, if you're young, like these guys, two chances. First chance to mess up, second chance you rotate for the third person in. Okay guys, this is how it's played. Watch. So you have to stand with your feet wide apart like Madeline is, okay? This is just one pattern. There's multiple patterns that you can do. You can do it on the sidewalk or you can do it in grass. We're doing it on the mat just to make it easier for soft landings, okay? 
Remember when you jump, you always try to bend your knees and have a soft landing. So this is the first pattern. In, wide, together, over, on, and off. And if you can do that without messing up, then you would bring it up to your knees. You guys bring it up to your knees. Still hold it out wide with your legs. I'm wider than they are, so they're going to have to hold it wider for me. Ready? Here I go. I have to jump in, wide, together, over, and on. Then I have to jump off without messing up. Off. Okay, now they're going to bring it up to their hips. Okay? Now, their hips are a little bit more narrower than my hips, so they can put their hands inside and hold it out. Put their hands inside and hold it out. Okay, but they have to hold it still. Because if they move it, then that's not fair to me. I have to try to jump in. Oh my goodness, I think I could do it. <laughs> Remember, when you're jumping, you swing your arms down and then up. In, wide together, over. Can I get both legs on top? On, and then I get off. Then you can bring it up to your shoulders. And their shoulders are more narrow than mine, so they'll slide their arms up and hold it out. All right. You said you can step in a little bit. All right. If you don't have three people, you can do this with a chair, but be careful because the chair could flip over on you when you're trying to do it. Don't lean back so much, okay? All right, hold it wide, Issa. Here we go. Oh, I made it in. Wide, together. Over, I made it over. Can I make it on? I don't know. No. Ah, I missed it. Then we would stop and rotate a new person in. So we take it back down to our ankles. We'll let Issa try it. Okay. Issa's going to jump in. Wide. Keep your feet inside. Oops. Keep them inside and go wide. Now back together. Now over, not on, all the way over. Now on. Now all the way off to the side. Uh oh. All the way off to the side. Oh, she did it. Now we're going to bring it up to her knees. My knees are a little bit higher, so I'm only going to go as high as Madeline's knees. Okay, let's see. Can she jump in? Woo, good. Wide. Jump, yep, like that. Back together. Over with both legs. It's going to be a challenge. But she did it! Now can she jump and land with both feet on top of the rope? Come on, you can do it. Oh, that would be her first mistake. Let's give her a second try. Step with this foot over. This foot over. All right, she's going to try it with two feet on again. Can she do it? Ah! All right, so now she rotates over and it's Madeline's turn. And we got to go back down to our ankles. Every time you start back down to your ankles. You can jump any pattern that you come up with. You can make your own pattern. You can even jump patterns that twist the ropes. In, wide, together, over. Sorry. In, wide, together, over, on. Okay. On. Now off to the side. Uh, okay. The challenge is to get everyone to do the same pattern and make it as high as possible. Okay, so she made the first round, so we bring it up to our knees, up to your knees. So my knees aren't quite as high, or too high, so I'm going to make it the same level as Issa's knees. Ready, go. In, wide, together, all the way over, on. Oh, no, second try. All the way on. I'll give you a hint. This is actually easier to do with shoes on because the friction on the bottom of your shoe is going to catch the band. All right, you guys get the idea. You can try it yourself. If you want to know where to purchase one of those bands, I'll give it the link in the comments. Bonus round! All right, guys. This game is not really a PE game, but it's a fun game to do if you're at a restaurant waiting to go inside. Or you can do it with sidewalk talk outside and get your vitamin D and sweat out some toxins. All right, so the name of the game is Dots and Lines. We have some dots drawn here. You can do as many as you want, just make a square. The object of the game is to close in as many squares as possible with your initial. So we're gonna play a quick game here so you get the idea. Okay, who's gonna play me? Me. Okay. Issa wants to play Caleb? Okay, I'm gonna help Issa. All right, so Issa, the way you start the game is one player draws. It has to be a straight line, not a diagonal line on any of the lines. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. 
straight line from one dot to another. Good job. Now it's Caleb's turn. Caleb, you can grab a different piece of chalk if you want. Lisa's turn. Now you only get one turn, unless Issa's doing a great demonstration. She just gave Caleb a walk, so he gets to close it up, and whenever you close it up, you put your initial in. So Caleb, go ahead and write a C in there. He's gonna write a C, and that means he gets one more turn to draw one more line. Each time you get a turn to draw one line. All right, now it's Issa's turn. If she closed it up, she gives him another one. Almost closes it up anyway. So look, one, two, three sides. Guess what? Caleb gets to fill another one. And every time he fills it, he gets to start with another line. So he gets to draw one more line. Every time you write a C, you draw one more line. There's no dots over there. You gotta do it where there's dots. There's dots over here. Okay, can you... Oh, Issa's turn. You can go. You can get a square. Now Issa gets to write an I inside. And when she writes an I, that means that she gets to draw another line somewhere. Uh-oh, that's okay, it's Caleb's turn. Oh, Isa, you get one. I'm helping Isa a little bit because she's a little bit younger. But she gets the idea of the game. Write your eye in there. All right, she gets to go again because she wrote her eye. Nope, 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 you only get one line. Kayla gets the other one. Try to see inside. He writes another line. They're running out of places. It gets tricky at the end. Caleb asked if you can skip your turn. You can't skip your turn. Every time you have to draw at least one line. She gets to do one more line. When it starts to get down where there's not very many places, the strategy is to try to pick a line that's going to give the least amount of boxes to your opponent. Because you know your opponent's going to get boxes once it gets to a point where there's no more lines left where they get no boxes. Every time you draw a line in your initial, draw your initial, you get to draw another line after your initial. So if she's smart, she'll see where she can fill in another hole and draw her another initial. Now she has to draw another line somewhere. And this is where the strategy comes in. She wants to try to pick one that's not going to give Caleb a lot of boxes. And that's a good choice. Caleb played that last round good because he only gave Issa three boxes and she just gave him one. She didn't have a choice. Two, three, four, five, six. At the end, you count to see who has the most initials and that's the person who wins the game. Always a good sport. Let's count the eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's count the C's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12. Who's the winner? Caleb, he filled the most boxes. All right, that's just a bonus sidewalk activity. Y'all, it's hot out there, but that was fun. Let's go get some water. Where's the water at? Where's the water at? Till next time, guys.